you have got a massive facility here in Manassas, Virginia. You guys are hiring hundreds of workers. You're expanding the facility, investing billions of dollars in it. So some people might look at this and say, why do you need help from Washington? Because it seems like you guys are doing just fine on your own already. Yes, certainly the demand for memory and storage products and semiconductors across all landmarks from data center to PC to smartphones to automobiles is high and these are secular growth trends as well. What is important for us is to have global competitiveness. And in order to have global competitiveness, it needs scale, it needs cost, it really needs sustainability of operations as well. Many of our uh, global competitors in the countries that they operate do get support from the foreign governments. And I think it is important that uh, U.S., in order to drive its leadership on the technology innovation and semiconductor manufacturing here in the domestic industry, provides also the right level of support to incentivize more investments here in the U.S. to support U.S. leadership in the semiconductor ecosystem. And that leadership is important because semiconductors are important for economic growth across all markets as well as for national security considerations. So is there a project that you can point to that you would be able to complete with the help from Washington that you weren't planning to do already? Well, we look at our global manufacturing footprint and global R&D footprint. We are well spread out across the globe. And we know that the demand for semiconductor memory and storage is going to continue to increase over the years. Micron is a strong, has a strong balance sheet. We have been able to invest in our technology and manufacturing capabilities around the globe. Our strategy is to grow our supply beds in line with the industry demand projections. We remain focused on that. We remain focused on driving innovation and leadership. So we make appropriate investments over time to meet the customer requirements across the end markets. So of course, right. we want to see the CHIPS Act get across the finish line, and we will continue to, as part of engaging in our global footprint, we'll continue to, of course, assess opportunities for greater innovation, greater manufacturing capability from here in the U.S., as well as our infrastructure around the globe. Sanjay, we have a question from one of our anchors, Sarah, up in New York. Sarah. Okay. Hi, Sanjay. It's good to see you. Sarah Eisen. Just my question is on the, on the timeline of all of this. If you, you guys in your industry get billions of dollars, tens of billions of dollars has been proposed. How long would it take for the U.S. to actually build out a semiconductor supply chain so that we wouldn't have to be dependent on foreign countries? And in the near term, how long is the supply shortage going to last? Because it, we're not going to build it fast enough to deal with that, are we? So first of all, Sarah, good to be on your show here today and great to talk to you again. Uh, with respect to the investments in semiconductors, as you know, that b constructing a new fabrication plant takes a long time. It's a year to two year project. Equipping it with leading edge equipment takes a while and then producing wafers takes a while as well. So these investments, as I was saying earlier, are needed to be sustainable over the years. The effort that goes into today, of course, will produce results in few years time frame. Semiconductors are, they take long time in terms of production output to be available from the investments that are decided to be made at a given time period of, uh, given period of time. So yes, these are investments for next decade or a couple of decades that need to be started now in order to secure the resiliency and the leadership of the U.S. semiconductor supply chain. In terms of the near-term shortages that you're referring to, of course, Micron has made necessary investments to continue to address it. Demand from all sectors today is high, and we, of course, continue to work closely with our customers to address their growing needs. But no question that as we see the markets through this calendar year, we see tightness in semiconductor memory and storage. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.